，一一五。Yeah, what is that? Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain chip company, recently pushed back on claims that it violated animal welfare laws a few years ago while testing on monkeys. This year, the company plans to test on human subjects. But when it does, what would this major step mean for brain implant science? Academics like me have conducted clinical trials in. Wait, wait, wait. Why can't why can we take animals, breed them in a small mini, mini cage, have them having the worst lives possible, uh, grow them, and then just to kill them in mass? But they can't do science. I don't get it. People with brain implants. Wait, I don't get it. Wait, am I dumb? Dr. Paul Niyajuki is a professor of bioengineering and neurosurgery. He directs the brain interfacing laboratory at Stanford. I'm dumb. For about 20 years now, academic research brain implants, up until this point, more or less, have almost exclusively been with wires. The different. No, I'm not vegan. I'm just saying. I'm saying they can they can put like a like a thousand cows in a small spot and make them fucking stun lock their entire lives until they're until they're killed. But if you test a, a chip on a monkey, they get mauled. I don't, I don't get it. The difference that the N1 has, the Neuralink, it's Im fully implantable. Killing within torture. Their entire lives from spawning in to dying is torture, though. It is battery powered. It is wireless. All of this is being done over Bluetooth protocol. Let's dive into the science behind Neuralink to understand how exactly human brain chips work. Imagine you spun in a cage where only your arms are out of the cage to get food. You can, is and you, you can only do this for your entire life, and then you die. How, how is that not torture? Go about trying to measure the energy from a double A battery. It's the same principle that we're doing with these brain implants. This is called neuroelectrophysiological recording. When you move your arm to the right, certain sets of neurons are activated yeah, I know, in a I know, certain but this... pattern. Listening in to that activity and that pattern, you can predict very quickly which direction the arm is going to move. These are the neurons that are directly no, wired no, to this. your muscle. Unless that pathway from the brain to the spinal cord to the muscle is damaged, the way it is in patients with no, paralysis. That pathway is damaged. But, then let me show you how like, uh, how innocent this. Basically, what it means is that we don't we don't really understand what what, the, what all the what the brain is doing, all the fucking whatever, all the all the whatever, but but. All I have to do is copy paste action. Whatever the brain is doing, copy paste. And the neural signals, that simple. the signals from the brain aren't going to get it's down just, to move whatever muscles. Whatever you do in action, but whatever in it's many doing, cases, the signals copy are that. still present in the brain. They're just not getting out. And then, so if you reach in boom. and put something that listens in to those neurons, and you know what's happening to the muscle. And that's the goal of a brain implant. Now let's look at a timeline of brain interface <sighs> breakthroughs over the years. Scholars have long been interested in how the brain works. So it's important to view these new developments at Neuralink as a culmination of breakthroughs by brain-machine interface researchers, especially in the last few decades. For example, in 2002, the first demonstration of real-time cursor control in monkeys took place. 2008, a monkey controlling a robotic arm in three dimensions fed itself. 2012, the first brain-controlled robotic arm by a human. 2017, a human controlled a cursor mentally to type out words and sentences. Dr. Nyojukian was part of this study, as well That's as the one in insane. 2018, where a human subject mentally controlled a tablet to do things like browse the web, send emails, and play games or music. All that's been done with a couple hundred electrodes. But in 2019, Neuralink, a private company, changed the game when it unveiled a pig named Gertrude with a wireless implant that monitored about a thousand neurons. The neurons are like wiring. Um, and you kind of need an electronic thing to solve an electronic problem. That was a very interesting moment because yes, it signaled to the community that they're serious. They're That's nice level for gaming. Wait a minute. No, it's not. It, they, would, they would have to upscale that technology so much to, to the point where it'd be like instant and very accurate. It, this would take us so much time. It's insane. They're building hardware from scratch and they're putting it in large animals. For the pig, the electrodes were implanted in somatosensory cortex, allowing them to measure sensory activity, like that of taking a step. Every time that that particular neuron they were listening to fired, you would hear this little pop or click from the audio channel. And so the moment I heard it, right, it's like, oh yeah, hold, they got neurons. You just recognize it instantly. You know what neurons sound like if you've been listening to them for decades. And that's what they were communicating, right? They, they, were, they were telling the field, we've got neurons. 
And overnight, it seemed the industry took notice. Then, in April of 2021, Neuralink released the so-called Mind Pong video. Pager was the name. It's a rhesus macaque. Oh, wow, that was pretty fast. The type of monkey that is very commonly used in this field. Implanted with two of the N1 devices, the Neuralink devices, performing I need a brain robot control for real. Uh, of a cursor on a screen. That's extremely significant as bad because as yours, Omega here Long. Neuralink is showing their new hardware, their new device in their hands works in a monkey. That's the level that's necessary. I don't know. To Am I wrong to think that it's fine for them to for them to make a small hole and give them like a device, whatever they... I, I, to convince the FDA not, that you're ready to go into it's human not terrible. Controls. That's the evidence the FDA is looking for. The recording power of the N1 device in Pager was eye-opening because of the sheer number of individual electrodes that had been implanted. There was definitely a lot of clever engineering that went into that to build a device that can transmit 2048 electrodes worth of spiking information, right, of, of digital ones and zeros of spikes over a radio wirelessly. And when you have that many channels, the performance that you should be able to get should eclipse what we've been able to do in the academic That's field. pretty crazy, actually. You know, the maximum number of electrodes I've ever recorded from is... This lady's really plugged in. She's charging so up. All those okay, electrodes, how does a device like the N1 get implanted in a subject's brain? Make no mistake, this is neurosurgery. It is not a joke. This requires cutting no, the skin, getting down to skull, drilling a what? hole in the skull bleeding, and tissue damage. So what would it take for the FDA to approve clinical trials in humans? The Neuralink device are called class three medical devices. They, they are implantable and they're going into very sensitive body cavities. That is the highest level of scrutiny that the FDA assigns to medical devices. They don't have a predecessor. There's no previous example that's approved. And so, you know, very appropriately, they got a high bar they have to cross in order to get it approved. So what Neuralink has to do next is prepare a very long and technical document with all the evidence from animal studies that their device is safe and effective. This document is submitted to the FDA, who has 90 days to review and give them an answer. If the FDA says yes, then their clinical trial is approved and Neuralink can enroll and recruit human okay. participants. We're on the cusp. Let me play a very unreasonable scenario here. What if they had this idea that could literally save humanity and go crazy mode, right? But then they need to test it on something and they say, no, you can't test it on anything. Then what? Of a complete paradigm shift. This type of technology has the potential to transform our treatments, not just for stroke and paralysis and degenerative disease, motor degenerative disease, but also for pretty much every other type of brain disease, from Parkinson's to epilepsy to dementias, Alzheimer's, and even psychiatric disease. Seeing Neuralink and the other companies in this space start an industry around neuroengineering, brain machine interfaces, neuroprosthetics, has been a tremendous amount of validation for neuroscientists and engineers who've been working in this space for decades. How much happier could the scientific community be than to give birth to an industry? So will this industry someday lead to the creation? So, so why don't they just go into the country where it's looser, just do all the tests over there and bring the data back to the US or whatever? Is that not possible? Should cyborg humans with superhuman intelligence? There's all sorts of wild speculation in our field. I think How science do do, fiction okay. is wonderful at telling very creative and captivating stories about all sorts of things, including including brain machine interfaces. The reality is we are in such early stages of this space, right? Where saying. we are just barely okay, able to record from neurons that control muscles. Um, what is this? Uh, I'm being discriminated against, this is weird. This is discrimination.